The other week I did a video on an application called Clip Menu, and in the comment section for that video, a lot of people recommended another application called Green Clip. Now both of these are very similar, however, Green Clip has one key advantage over Clip Menu. Now, if you didn't actually see that video, basically both of these applications are clipboard history managers. So normally when you copy something, whether that be on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, so you copy this right here. This bit of text is now going to be in your clipboard. But if you then go and say copy something else, that previous bit of text is no longer going to be in your clipboard and you can no longer paste it. But with a clipboard history manager, basically it's going to keep track of everything that you've gone and copied. So if you want to go back to something previously, you can just go through this list and find what you actually want to paste. Now, the advantage that this has over something like clip menu is let's say we go and take a screenshot. Let's just take a picture of this right here and then we add it to my clipboard. As we'll notice, we actually have an image selection in here. So this isn't perfect. It does have a limit of 500 kilobytes. So if you try to take a full screen picture of your entire 4K desktop, that's obviously going to be too big. But if it's just a little bit of a screenshot, you can at least store something like that. And a lot of screenshot applications do actually let you change the quality of the file as well. So in those cases, you can compress it and still actually keep it in your clipboard. So if we go and switch back to something else. Let's switch back to this text right here and then try to paste this in. As you can see, it works just fine. And then if we switch back to the image, and let's go over to something like Ripcord and then try to paste that in. Now we can actually paste the image. If you look at the GitHub page for this, you'll probably notice that most of it talks about using this with Rofi. And if you want to do so, you can run this command right here, but you don't actually need to do so. And I'm not actually using Rofi on my system. The only reason I have it installed is because right now, the AUR package for GreenClip actually has it as a dependency. You can also use basically any other sort of DMenu compliant launcher. So anything that takes in a list of values separated by a new line character will work just fine with this. So FZF also works just fine or any of the other clones of those applications. So I will go over this command towards the end of the video, but as you can see, this is what I was running earlier. This is my preferred method of using the application. Before you can start keeping track of your clipboard history, you first need to go start up the green clip daemon. And to do that, all you do is run the green clip daemon command. Now what you're going to notice is it's going to start outputting some values in here. So this value right here is the name of the clipboard of the application you just copied from. So for example, if we copy from something like Alacrity, Alacrity's clipboard doesn't actually have a name. But if we go over to something like say Firefox instead and copy, let's say we copy this text down here. The clipboard in Firefox is actually called Firefox. And if we go to something like Brave instead, let's go to, I don't know, GitHub, that'll work. And let's copy a bit of text from here. Now this one is called the Chromium clipboard. So some applications name their clipboard well, in the case of Firefox, some name them at all, in the case of Chromium clipboard, and then some just don't bother at all. Now these names are actually very important for something we'll do in just a bit. But before that, we have a few extra commands. So if you ever want to print out the green clip history, all you do is run the green clip print command. And as we're going to see, we have everything here. Now you might have noticed that for an image, it does it in a bit of a weird way. So we have the mime type here. We have the name of the clipboard you copied from, and then this ID value here. Now this ID value is basically so it can actually look up where the image is actually located. And sometimes you don't actually have a clipboard when you actually copy an image. So in that case, you'll just have the MIME type and just have the ID. And if you ever feel like you need to clear out the clipboard, you can always just run the green clip clear command. Now this one is a bit less powerful than what we have over in clip menu because this one doesn't let you do a regex search and only remove certain things. Green clip clear is just going to clear the entire clipboard. That is one advantage that clip menu actually has. Back to the names that we saw over here. So these are useful if you want to go and blacklist certain applications. So let's say, for example, you have a password manager and you don't want to have anything from the password manager's clipboard being saved inside of your clipboard history. So what you're going to do is go into your config file, which is located in your .config directory in the greenclip.cfg file. There's no folder for it. It's just a file directly. 
And let's say we want to go and blacklist Firefox. Now this name has to match the name of the clipboard, not the name of the application itself. So in the case of Brave, that would be Chromium Clipboard, not Brave. So some applications are named really poorly and it's just something you have to sort of deal with. Now, if we go back to a terminal and restart the green clip daemon, so run the command again, and let's say we go and copy something from Brave now. If we bring up our clipboard history, as we notice, that's stored in the history. But if we go back to this one here, and let's say we copy all of this right here and try to go back into that, as we can see, that didn't actually get stored. So as for the rest of this config file though, basically all of this gets generated as soon as you first run the application. So you don't have to go copy this from the GitHub page or anything like that. You will have pretty much what we have right here. Now the first setting we have is the max history link. I believe by default, this actually is set to 50, but 50 is probably too much. So I'm gonna lower it down to 25. Now, we also have a history path and a static history path, which they put in a really weird spot, green clip dot history and green clip dot static history. They probably should be in green clip slash history and obviously also green clip slash static history just so you have these files stored together within a single folder. Now, with this static history path, I actually have no idea what this actually is because there's a lot of documentation pretty much missing from this application and there's no explanation of what static history actually means. The history path is pretty straightforward. That's just your regular history file. This one, on the other hand, is a bit of a mystery for me. Now, after that, we have the image cache path. So this is basically, if you copy an image, where should the image actually be saved to? So when you want to paste that somewhere, it can actually be selected from. It's probably fine to leave this in slash TMP slash green clip, but you can go and move that if you do want to. Then you have the use primary selection as input, which I've got set to false because basically setting that to true, what it's gonna do is every time you highlight something, that would be added into your clipboard history, which I would find to be really, really annoying because you're gonna start losing a lot of the stuff you actually think is useful. So if you didn't know, the primary selection is basically anything that's highlighted. Then you have your clipboard selection, which is anything that you've copied. And then you also have another clipboard called the secondary clipboard, which really doesn't get used by anything. And the last one, pretty straightforward, trim space from selection, whether if you have extra space that doesn't need to be there, if that should be kept in. Sometimes this can be okay. So for example, if you have a big long line like this and you wanna copy the entire line, Getting rid of this space is probably a good idea, but in some instances, keeping the extra space there might actually be what you want to see happen. Back to that command we saw at the beginning. So what we have here is we're printing out the clipboard history, and then we're piping that into a sed, and this sed is gonna basically delete any of the blank lines. So this says between the start of the line and the end of the line, if there's nothing in between them, delete those lines. This D menu command, what that's gonna do is do case insensitive matching, and then dash L10 means show 10 lines on the screen. And then lastly, we have the xargs command. So dash R basically means if you don't receive a value, just don't run. So if you don't actually select anything in this D menu prompt here, then it's just not gonna run the rest of this. Dash D basically means set the delimiter. In this case, we're setting it to a new line character. And dash capital I basically means use this right here as the thing we're going to replace with xargs. So in this case, we're going to put whatever value gets passed into xargs into this spot right here. Now, green clip print is actually sort of interesting. I didn't show you this earlier. Green clip print is effectively just an alias for modifying your clipboard. So if we do green clip print and then say pass in high, that's actually been added into our clipboard now. I don't know why green clip print is set up like that and it's not a separate command, but that's basically how it works. So pretty much whatever we select in D menu here is gonna be passed into this right here and then stuck in our clipboard. One of the big problems this application has is for some reason, the history file is a binary file. Now I thought this might've been because maybe the images were being stored inside of the history file, but as we saw before, they were being stored in a separate directory. So I don't actually know why it's a binary file and not just a regular text file because there's only 50 or 100 elements in it. So it's not like you're gonna get a massive speed improvement from using the binary file. If someone knows why it's like that, then feel free to let me know, but it seems like a bit of a weird thing to do, especially when it makes it much harder to actually work with that file. And the other thing is the file size limit for images. So being 500 kilobytes, it does limit a lot of use cases, and I'm not really sure why the limit is actually there, because I've worked with Xclip 
actually trying to put images into my clipboard and it works fine with multiple megabyte files. So I'm not exactly sure what the problem this application actually is. But if those problems don't really matter to you and the fact that there is no documentation isn't really that much of a problem, hey, maybe, maybe using this actually would be a pretty good idea. Now, I know there are plenty of other alternatives you could use as well. A lot of the people in the comments for this are probably going to start saying, hey, what about Copy Q? And I will be looking at Copy Q as well. I just wanted to do this one first. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinion, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montezar, Chico Bento, Joseph Pitity, Road, Tony Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick McKell, Nate Dog, Nephite, Tees, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, style, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library and Odyssey if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.